My name is Kevin France. I'm CEO of SWIM. I'm honored to have with me Kirk Leister and Bryce Jones, who each lead sales and business development activities throughout all of our regions here at SWIM. Uh, we'll be presenting segments of this PowerPoint covering uh, anything from integration to applications to conservation use cases. Then we'll, at the end, we'll have some time for uh, Q&A. Let's talk a little bit about the agenda. We're going to cover a quick swim overview, talk a little bit about the dashboard and the reporting that we do around water accounting and water balances, their importance. Uh, then we'll dive into consumption via uh, satellite and weather combined. That's something we get asked a lot about because a lot of folks are familiar either with weather consumptive use uh, based data or satellite. Very few understand the meshing uh, that we happen to do to, to get at more accurate data. Talk a little bit about groundwater, equipment integrations, the data analysis that we do, uh, which is quite broad. Uh, On-farm conservation consulting, we'll talk about a couple of case studies down in Southern California where we see that quite a bit. Uh, a little bit about the future of SWIM, what's uh, coming, uh, what is upcoming here in the next three to six months, and then handle some frequently asked questions and open it up for Q&A. Uh, within the Q&A box here, as we get toward the end of the presentation, encourage you to uh, ask questions, and we'll get to every single one of them, as long as time permits, and we'll go from there. So let's start with a short video, and then we'll dive into the presentation. My name is Kevin France and I'm CEO of Swim System. We're on-farm water accounts and we track every drop of water that goes onto your field, whether it's surface supplies, groundwater, and precipitation, all bundled in. And we track each of those units of water and attach a cost to it so that you know how much water you're using from what source and how much it's costing you. We then go one step further and we track all of the water that leaves your system. Some of that water goes to grow crop, then the rest of the water goes and leaves the system and goes somewhere else. When you take all of the water onto your field and water off of your field and you put mesh those together, you can get a, a calculation we call irrigation efficiency, which is basically a percentage of how much water your farm is actually using on your field. So there's three main components to developing water balance. There's instrumentation in the field, where we gather flow and then we put that to the internet through telemetry securely. The second component is weather data. We use that to estimate consumption by your crop. Third element is up in the sky. We use satellite imagery to cross-reference the weather data and confirm that it's accurate. Those three elements provide a very accurate by-field water balance. Grow Relations is an important part of SWIM because that's the part of our team who's corresponding and training our clients on how to use not only our software dashboard, but the audited water balance report we provide weekly and at the end of the season. These reports include information for how much water has been applied to the field, rainfall, crop water use, and what's run off the field or gone through deep percolation. We not only help clients save water, but in many instances, we've helped clients improve their yield, which has tremendous value. We are your trusted on-farm water accountants. With the planning tool and patented management process co-developed with the help of the USDA, we serve some of the largest clients you could think of and those you will never see. Growers that wish to know where every drop is going, their livelihoods depend on this level of precision. We are thankful for the opportunity to serve our various stakeholders and I personally welcome you to SWIM. Right. The quote that seems to resonate best um, as we've gone through this journey of developing uh, tools to help growers protect their water allocations and get a very good, deep understanding of their, their, their water use um, is this quote that came from Dave Pooley. He's CEO of, of Western Growers. And one point here a couple of years back, we were chatting after having lunch after chatting with a couple of uh, growers, and he says, an argument over water is actually an argument over data. And that struck me, it still stri strikes me to this day. When we're arguing about data around surface and groundwater application and consumption, it's really not about who's right, who's wrong, it's really about the data to back it. It's like anything, unfortunately, in the world today. So the better your data, the better off you are. And that's, that's the message that I took from that quote, and it still sits with me today. 
So as we talk a little bit about what SWIM is, we are a crop water budget accounting firm. So look at us the same way you'd look at your CPA or your accountant uh, for your financial accounts, right? They're tracking your progress throughout the year, providing insight and help with regard to your finances, not only the money coming into your account, but the money going out and where it's going. So just replace money with water. And that's in essence what we're talking about here. We're meshing delivery and consumption reports by field together. And we're providing that in near real time fashion. So those reports, even though they come out to you, they're being audited by our team. They're being watched over. And if there's errors, we catch them throughout the season. So it's not a situation where we give you the data and the equipment and you hope for the best. We make sure that it's as good as it possibly can be. One of the outputs, one of the many outputs you get from the uh, water balance report is something we call a consumptive use fraction. Uh, it's better known as irrigation efficiency by most. It's a percentage. We start with it at the beginning of the, scene as your, uh, as of the season as your baseline, and then we look to improve it each and every week. And that's, of course, the percentage of water that's going to grow crop. The rest of that water is going somewhere else. And of course, we tell you in quantity how much, where it's going, uh, in water quantity and in cost. And that's useful information, as you can imagine. So this one has multiple patents behind it. USDA helped us develop it over a five plus year uh, research and development uh, process. Uh, it's been vetted by, by many folk and it's based in solid science. That's why our friends at Western Growers endorse us. Uh, the CEO and CFO of Western Growers sits on our advisory and our board respectively. Um, and they've made a pretty sizable investment in us. Why? Because they see SWIM as a tool that will help growers protect that valuable water allocation, bottom line. And that's, that's our focus and mission each day. But we're the only company that, that we're aware of that provides these financial statements, the equivalent of financial statements for the water account. And a couple of things that set us apart is they're accurate, they're auditable, they're uh, trusted, and we're using data in the field as well as remotely sensed data to integrate and provide a different dimension. I like to call it the pro version of your water use report. So many of you that are listening today will have some level of flow data. You either go out to the flow meter with a pad, pad and pen, you write it down, put it in an Excel spreadsheet. Some of you might have some telemetry and, and equipment put, uh, putting data to the cloud, flow data, cumulative data, maybe some rough uh, reference or crop-based CT. We bring all that data together into something that's usable and actionable. Um, a water balance is a term we use, others is, do as well. Uh, that, that term really means that you're keeping track of the water entering and leaving the field during a season. So we set that as the bookend, planning or budding and harvest, we're tracking everything that's happening during that period. It's not sampled data. And what, what I mean by that, we get asked that a lot, is this is real-time field level data analytics. And most of the data we're pulling is actually what's happening in the field real time. We do use some models to help validate that, but this, this is telling you what's happening. It's not just an idea or kind of what I like to call a, a macro version, like a big picture version of what's happening. This tells you field level what's happening and gives you very accurate information. Uh, it's very much like balancing your checkbook. So why do we do a water balance, you might ask? Lots of reasons. First off, it gives you a much deeper dive into your water use. So it's good, great to start with cumulative consumption, cumulative application, what's happening during uh, certain stages of plant growth. But to mesh that together and basically balance your water balance each and every day, which is what SWIM does behind the scenes, gives you that multidimensional look. It, looks, it allows you to measure best irrigation practices, flag under and over irrigation conditions, monitor for regulatory compliance. We're starting now to directly report to counties and states in many of the regions we're in. That is only continuing. And we do it only with the client's permission, but we take that off the client's plate, assuming they want it, because most of our growers, they wanna grow. They don't wanna worry about their water accounting and compliance and this and that. They wanna know it's being done and being done right. Improves yields, reduces water usage, and benchmarking. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a later slide. Inputs for water balance, it's not what you maybe might think it is. It's not a lot of soil moisture, it's not a lot of monitoring, it's what's happening on and off the field. So we start, of course, with all your sources of water, which would be rainfall, irrigation deliveries from surface or from groundwater. Uh, next up is crop specific evapotranspiration, our friends 
and USDA helped us with that. Uh, need to know the field size location because we're graphically placing that on a map and sending the satellite over to take a shot of it and compare against other data sets. We need to also know the planting and harvest dates because that gives us the bookends. Of course, then we can track the water balance throughout the season. Swim certification. Uh, some of you have seen my, my model here of a pretend orange. I used to have an orange that I replace about once a week or eat if I was hungry in my office. I have an orange and I have a pretend lemon. But point is, as you can see the certification stamp on here. Uh, some of our growers that grow commodity crops just work directly with their channel and acquire better payments for water certified product because those end buyers are able to then promote it within their within their marketing chain. Many of our growers will put it on on their packaging. We have a whole series of almond growers throughout Central California this year at this harvest uh, cycle. They are putting it directly on their product, right? Again, right next to uh, the other certifications that they deal with, whether it's organic, uh, non-GMO, et cetera, et cetera. Water sustainability is important. It's becoming more and more important, and we help validate and uh, verify that component of their. Uh, of their uh, input. Counting for water, not as easy as you might think. It's not just putting a meter on the field, maybe taking some snapshots from the field, whether satellite or aerial, and off you go. There's lots of holes that can occur uh, in between those events that we're capturing each and every day. Whether there's an event happening on the delivery side, whether evapotranspiration is happening on the other side, we capture both, of course, inputs and outputs. Most of our growers have if they're lucky, two sources of water, surface and ground. Some only have one. You know, some of our growers only have surface, some only have groundwater. But you bucket those together and then you have this, this bucket of available water. And then, of course, it's distributed to each farm and then to each field. And then they're trying to figure out how much is being applied and consumed on that field. So every place there's a question mark here, we give you an answer. We tell you quantity, how much of that is relevant to growing, and the cost. And those are three inputs that are invaluable, we're being told by our clients. High level, we're capturing every available flow point for water. Uh, we're using that through pump and gate data, as you can imagine. We then mesh it with a combination of weather and satellite data. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in the, in the uh, seminar. We then use your field and crop data to give us those, those bookends. And then, of course, our friends at the USDA, their crop production functions give us a benchmark to look at. That data is in processed regularly each day. It's available to you as the grower, to your management group, to your irrigator, uh, all of the above. And then those reports can also be sent depending on compliance uh, to the district, the GSA, or, or in some cases, we're actually reporting directly to the state. The way we do it, here's a graphic. And if you can think about it, uh, each of these fields, we're capturing what's happening on and off. So to us, it doesn't matter if it's a furrow, sprinkler, drip field, we've done all three. Some clients have all three of those on their operations, as you can imagine. Uh, but we're capturing that on flow as it's happening. This is all temporal data. Our water engineers remind me of that. And, and I, what they mean by that is that these are all events happening over the course of time. So if you're not looking at it each and every day, you miss events, right? You apply the water, some of that goes to grow crops, some of it leaves the system. If you're not tracking it, on a daily basis, you've got holes. And that's what we're doing. And we're using a combination of climatic data in the region, two sources, ours and publicly available data. And then that Landsat satellite comes over. And then we use that to spot check every eight to 16 days. It's all happening automatically in the cloud behind the scenes, but we're checking it. If there's a problem, our AI routine kicks it out and a human looks at it. If, it's, if there's not a problem, we just kind of go along to the end of the season. At the end of the season, you get that audited report. Uh, the data is available in multiple uh, methods. We have download PDF files. They're sent out once a week by default to our growers. Starting in November with version two, you'll be able to download them at different iterations. Uh, they're delivery reports and water balance reports. And the delivery, here you see some screenshots, summarizes the data for each of your flow points. Again, it attaches a price, base price per unit of water, and you're gonna get your deliveries and your dollars amount. So some of our growers will put the dollar amounts that they're spending on water all costs in. You know, pumping costs, uh, electricity, the whole nine yards. Some growers will put the value of that water if they're in a region where they can get a conservation payment for it. So like price slash cost slash value of water. 
uh, is configured depending on what the grower is trying to, trying to uh, obtain as far as a payment or savings and costs. Then all of those delivery reports will culminate to a water balance report generally at a field level. As you can see the summary, it looks just like your bank statement. Pretty easy. Water in, water out, depth, volume, and of course the value that we're aggregating because that matters. And then you get certain data points like effective rainfall, how much of that water went to grow crop. Can you be more efficient there? The irrigation efficiency percentage I was uh, mentioning earlier is also broken down and updated each and every week. Provides that solid benchmark to improve again. So you can see data-wise how you're doing, not just how it feels, if that makes sense. Then the ledger, the detailed ledger counting of every single event, water in, water out, Water balance deficit, off you go. Version two of the dashboard coming out here toward the end of this year will also allow you to assign a bank balance, an actual water use balance for each of your accounts, which is great. So that is helpful because a lot of our growers will be dealing with limited budgets. They'll be moving water amongst their, their fields. It will track it just like your bank account, which is great. Uh, cumulative daily time step water balance. Again, we're balancing your checkbook, quote unquote, once a day. And good graphic here. This is one of the report, one of the graphics you'd receive on your report. Uh, you can set a target baseline delivery. So this is what the grower is looking to attain in their deliveries. And then the blue line is the delivery. So that's what's happening. Uh, consumption is dark green. So that's what's happening while delivery is occurring. Whole goal is for that grower to narrow the difference between delivery and consumption. They can see it graphically. They can see what it means in quantity, volume, and then dollars and cents. We then track subsurface and surface return flow. In some cases, we track them as separate items. In some cases, they're lumped together. It's all depending on the application. Um, we move forward here. All of that data is also available on a on-demand dashboard that you can set uh, the layout, the data that you're tracking, and set alarms uh, with it. You can set a map up of your field, flow location, and you can see the visual layers in that map of what we're using to calculate the water balance. So that's going to be consumption data, uh, ET uh, data. It's going to be that also available in there is a crop stress data, the NDVI layer, which is helpful, but then the data. So we have every flow location on your field here mapped, so you can see what's happening real time. Last time that data was checked, weekly change, and if it's an alarm, like this particular widget is an alarm, that's why it's in red, tells you there's a problem with it. Um, moving forward, you can also see the level of detail. Our team is quality checking your data. They're not looking at it every day, but they're looking at it in the arrears uh, as it's occurring by the end of the season before we produce that, that final report. Um, it's going to be green all the way across here. So our growers can see where we have validated data, where there's issues in the data, et cetera, et cetera. Weekly change. You can also set alarms. You see this, this particular flow point was set. So when it's running, it should be between 400 and 1200 GPM. If it goes outside that window, you get alarmed. You can set that for against your water budget. If you have a particular amount of water use that you're trying to attain, it'll alarm you before you get there. And of course, you can set the, the limits on the time frame. Um, water balance report, this or the widget here looks very similar to what comes up on the water balance report. We just covered this here previously. Cumulative delivered water, cumulative consumed water, and then subsurface and surface water. And you can see by amounts, by dates, you can dive in uh, to the weeds as much as you need to. All of this data is available in a customized series of widgets. You set the priorities for your operation, and that's probably the biggest thing that sets us aside. Most folks have a dashboard, what you see is what you get. We allow growers to customize the data stream so that it makes sense to them. If they're trying to track on a particular field their consumptive use fraction, their irrigation efficiency, that's the widget that pops up on their, on their screen. You know, some of our growers will start at 50, 60%. They're looking to improve over the season. They can see how that's trending very easily in the dashboard. Um, I'm now going to turn this over to Bryce. Bryce, if you want to go and take uh, the next couple of sections and uh, go ahead and share your thoughts on them. We'll start with consumption via satellite and weather. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Bryce Jones here. So I'm going to talk about, go into a little bit more detail on how we get the satellite and weather data and how we work on that accuracy. 
So there are two methods to get uh, ET data. One method is through weather, where we're using reference ET, and we're doing a crop coefficient relative to the crop so we can estimate ET. That data comes in every 15 seconds. Uh, it's, it's accurate to a degree. And the second method is satellite data. The limitation with satellite data is that we get a flyover about every eight days. We're all, we're all held to that. Until we can get a satellite that flies over every 15 seconds, we're gonna have to use a reference ET. Um, but we take that data and we mesh them together in order to get the accuracy for the daily data. And I've, I've got some representations I'll show you here to make a little bit more sense of that. So this is the idea. We, we're getting the weather data every 15 seconds. So we're continually calculating ET. But in between that, or during that, those periods, we have flyovers of a satellite about every eight days. In those eight days, we're able to see what actual ET is, and then we can work backwards to fill in the gaps on that data to make sure that we're accurately tracking a daily ET balance. So here's a great graphical representation of it. In the blue, we're showing weather data. In the gray, we're showing actual ET. So we've got uh, weather ET and we've got actual ET. And the difference there is what we fill in because it, it's just not as accurate. Uh, but between the two, we can get a very, very accurate and audible uh, water balance for you and, and get the ET. Now here's a great map version. This is on our dashboard. Uh, this is taking a look at, at, uh, at ET values, real-time ET values. Um, you can also dig down into the NVDI layer, which will show crop stress on your specific farm, your specific crop, so you can see what's going on. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about some issues we have out here in the West. Um, this is one application for SWIM. There, there's many applications using the data to answer different questions. Uh, groundwater here in the West. We're gonna talk about in equipment integrations and we're gonna talk a little bit about data analysis. So out here in California, we had uh, the groundwater management legislation was put into place, uh, which became active this year. And the idea was to get over pumping under control at the local level and reduce the amount of stress that was happening on the aquifer. So if uh, it's been, if a uh, solution isn't found and we don't relieve the stress on the aquifer at the current rate, we're estimated to take 500,000 to a million acres of uh, ag land out of production. Where SWIM can help, we can keep customers in production by managing available water resources more efficiently and effectively. So here's a, this is a nice video by one of our customers, uh, Don Cameron, and he's gonna talk a little bit about his experience with SWIM and what it's helped him to answer. I'm Don Cameron, General Manager at Terranova Ranch. Uh, we've been using SWIM for the last two years to uh, monitor our water usage in uh, several crops here on the ranch. At first, we, uh, we were a little skeptical when we started with SWIM. Uh, didn't know if it was gonna benefit us long-term, but after the uh, second year that we've gone through now, we found some real discrepancies in our water application. Uh, we, uh, we've made changes already. But not only that, but we, we really think that uh, long-term, this is gonna be important to know exactly how much water we use on each crop as we deal with Sigma moving forward here. Uh, when dealing with SWIM, we just think that uh, they're a really good fit for our operation here. Uh, we know that uh, monitoring water usage is gonna be critical as we move forward. And we think uh, the SWIM is gonna be the best choice for us here on Terranova. I think, I think that's great. Terranova found that just over a two year period, they were able to, able to not only significantly impact and reduce the water usage that they had on their farms, but also increase production as well. Uh, this is a slide showing some of the distributor equipment partnerships we have. We integrate easily with hardware distributors, manufacturers, and integrators. We're sort of like the pro version of the flow measurement. So they can measure flow. We need to get the flow data in order to do the, the rest of our calculations. So if you think of it like an app, uh, flow measurement is like counting calories on an app. We combine the calorie counting and we add in the exercise. 
So we're looking at the plant use and we really bring the whole picture together. So the good thing about SWIM, uh, we're like an umbrella that can go over hardware packages. We seamlessly tie into current flow and telemetry equipment and bring their data to the next level, maximizing the grower's understanding of their water usage and ability to manage their crops much better and their water usage. The next is a, a video. This is a, this is a great example of us being deployed on a, on a, on a field of, uh, with WiseCon um, where we've got WiseCon equipment in place and we're putting our, our SWIM SAS model right over the top of that just to bring better data. This is happening out of Fresno State as we speak. So we're out here today with, uh, at Fresno State Farms where they're growing olives here. We're partnered up with WiseCon where we're gonna be doing water balance data. They'll be collecting the flow. What we're doing is tying that into a water balance where we take a look at all the irrigation, effective precipitation, what the plant is using, and also deep percolation. That way we know where all the water is going and we can create a water balance with that that's running on a daily basis and consolidate on a weekly and monthly basis and a year end report. So with that, the, the next video is a, another video of mine. There's me talking about quality control. So how we QA and QC the, the data to ensure that we're doing everything consistently and accurately moving forward and our audited reports reflect what's actually happening on the field. QA, QC, that stands for quality assurance and quality control. Quality assurance ensures that techniques and processes are implemented correctly and consistently. And that includes standard operating procedures, maintenance, and installation checks. Quality control is an ongoing process that focuses on identifying problems in the data, including field checks by our technicians, review of delivery and water balance reports, and a thorough data review of all collected data. Part of the standardization process with SWIM, prior to the data being collected, is that we standardize the installation, we standardize the maintenance schedule, we standardize the battery monitoring, which is most times done remotely. We also do installation checks to ensure that everything is functioning correctly after we leave the field. Some of the field checks are completed using flow trackers, in-field flow meter checks, and hand checks at gates or other structures with monitored equipment. Data collected can be collected by the hour or more frequently in some cases, and regularly analyzed by SWIM's data science team to ensure accuracy and consistency. By following regular QAQC, it allows us for corrections to automatically collect the data when necessary. So I'm gonna pass it over to Kirk. He's in Southern California where they do some water conservation and consulting projects, a little bit different than we do up in Central California. Good afternoon. Uh, in our area, we, we, our district offers a water conservation program called the OFECP. Um, growers receive an incentive for uh, conserving uh, irrigation watering. And so through, uh, through a lot of moving parts in the program, rebates are typically uh, based on historical data and how close the grower can keep ET for each crop in each field. And with a lot of, like I said, with a lot of uh, other moving parts and calculations, um, it, it becomes confusing with our growers. And so our growers need somebody to kind of straighten that out for them, take a look at it, and make sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. So with that part said, we're, we're able to um, use some of what we see in the field and we can compare usage and confirm or increase program revenue through this program for our farmer. Uh, so almost like an insurance policy for our farmers uh, and walk them through each program. Uh, part of this program, we also include uh, 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 crop proposals into the IID. So you have to propose your program into the IID. And we help with all that as well. Sometimes uh, quite cumbersome for the farmer. So they can do what they do best and we can do what we do best. So here we are with Sean Callen to have a, a testimonial in, in Southern California. All right. Hi, my name is Sean Callens, uh, owner and operator of Callens Farms. 
uh, here in uh, Westmoreland, California. Uh, I've started using swim about a year ago, uh, just to start working on efficiency, checking accuracy of deliveries, and so far I have no complaints. Uh, I'm able to monitor hour by hour if I want uh, all my irrigations, and it, it helps me be much more efficient uh, and help save water. All right, so as you heard, Sean, some of Sean's frustrations were, were about water delivery from the district. And, and we hear a lot of that from our customers. And so uh, we, with his thoughts, uh, we begin uh, as efficient as we can. We, we wanna be able to measure those and try to help uh, ease his mind a little bit on how accurate he can be compared to district water flow. And if, it, if he is as efficient as he can be, uh, possibly some things that he can do to, to become more efficient with our equipment in the field. So a majority of our, our farmers have open channel uh, canals. So uh, we put our equipment on the gates and it sometimes is real difficult to be able to kind of really figure out exactly how much water is going into your crop. Um, he also mentioned that when farmers pick up new ground, obviously there's, there's a little bit of a, a learning curve and with equipment in the field, uh, we're able to lessen that curve uh, when it comes to growing whatever crop, whatever field it may be. Um, uh, he talks a little bit about um, our, our service provides a, a value to some of the lease ground. So, it, it, you know, in Sean's case, he mentioned if he was going to lease some of his ground, he would be able to bring historical data to life and be able to empower a grower that might be um, that, that might be subleasing his ground, and kind of give him a start, you know, a starting block on, on what he can and 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 what possibly historically he can't do. So the future of swim, um, hopefully, it has most of you as part of our part of our swim team. Swim continues to make advancements for our customers, and it's reporting and user dashboard features. Um, the, the, the SWIM team is going to be able to release version 2.0 on the on-farm dashboard uh, late this fall. Uh, and this is going to include a new visual experience to be able to provide for easier access to, to common features, okay? So there's a lot of people that consistently want pretty close to the same thing across the board. And, and we're going to be able to have, have those accessible a little bit easier. Um, and, and be able to visually see some of those things. We're also, uh, we also have found that uh, farm management companies are benefiting from our services. So they could be over in North Carolina and, and be in a, they're able to visually see uh, water moving or, or what we're doing with water balance reports uh, with the farmers that are actually growing uh, in California. Uh, so we're seeing more and more people that way. So we, we announced the release of the SWIM software service offering. Uh, so, as Bryce mentioned before, it requires no new equipment, okay? So if our people already have uh, installed brands of, of common equipment in the field, it allows us to use that data uh, in which you already have access to and be able to work through our water balance reports, deliver reports, and we're able to um, not only give uh, great data, but give data to people that, that you don't necessarily um, would be able to have access to uh, with your, obviously with your direction. We do have a series of questions that people uh, have asked previously in, in previous webinars. Let's go through some of our frequently asked questions. One, what is the difference between just measuring flow and swim? Flow tells you irrigation amounts. Swim accounts for irrigation, precipitation, crop water use, depercolation, and runoff. Swim is the only system available which provides all this data fully audited, near real time, and an easy to re read report available as often as you like. Swim also includes an audited report at season end. Question two, how does Swim bring value to my operation? Swim gives you the tools to improve crop production and optimize water use. Swim reports serve as audited third-party verification of water use and efficiency. 
This protects our clients from any arguments or regulatory constraints which lack the field-specific water data that SWIM provides. Number three, what crops can I monitor with SWIM? SWIM can be used with a wide variety of crop types, permanent crops, row crops, and perennial crops. Whatever your specific crop is, SWIM has a solution. Number four, what irrigation system do I need to use SWIM? SWIM can be used uh, based on all types of irrigation systems, including flood, furrow, sprinkler, and drip. No matter how old or new the system is in place, SWIM has the tools necessary to collect accurate data. Number five, do I need to have an automated irrigation system to use SWIM? That's not necessary. Um, SWIM can add or recommend equipment required for remote monitoring regardless of the current irrigation system. If you do have an existing automated irrigation system, SWIM can tie into this and collect data usually without requiring any additional equipment. Do I need to have a weather station to use SWIM? Number six. If you have a weather station on site, SWIM can tie into it. If not, SWIM can access available weather stations and in many cases, an existing SWIM weather station and or a public weather station can be used in our consumptive use calculation. It's always beneficial to have a weather station on site. And if you do, we can swim, we can tie into that. We try to have a minimum of two sources of weather data tied to each field we monitor to ensure accurate information. This combined with satellite imagery analysis allows us to provide an accurate field specific calculation of your crop water demand. Thank you. All right, Bryce. Kirk, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate your input. So we wrap things up here on the formal part of the presentation. I'll ask you to key up your questions. We did get a couple of questions emailed to us, texted, and then through the uh, the question and answer box here on on uh, on the uh, webinar. So feel free to get those questions rolling, and we'll answer a couple of questions. As we wrap up, though, I do want to draw your attention to the brochures, videos, and items we have on our website. If you go to swim.com, it's swim with two eyes, and you go to the resources uh, tab, you'll see brochures, case studies, video gallery. If you click on the brochures, you can download those. And then, of course, if you go to the video galleries, you can go to dashboard reports, which is right in the middle. Those will show you more detail on the dashboard, the reporting, you want to reach out to our sales team, they're happy to walk you through a one-on-one -on -one demo, answer any questions you might have. So uh, with that, I appreciate everyone's attention. Let's, uh, let's handle a couple of questions and answers with the remaining time that we have. Let's, let's start with the first question that came in here. Um, I already have installed equipment for irrigation efficiency and scheduling. Is it too late to use SWIM? I'm assuming that's a question to say, is it too late to start looking at your water balance accounting uh, after you install irrigation equipment? Uh, Kirk, Bryce, do one of you guys want to take that, that question? I would, say, I would say no, it wouldn't be uh, too late. And uh, if you were able to provide us some detailed reports um, based on or some historical reports from um, your water flow, maybe your district or whatever it may be, we should be able to integrate those up until um, uh, we're able to grab uh, some of the data with your equipment and then be able to integrate and maybe make a benchmark between the two to be able to show you uh, what was provided to us and then what we can do to capture and move forward. Perfect. Bryce, you have anything to add to that? Now it's pretty easy to, to go onto other equipment. You know, sometimes it requires adding telemetry, but if, if you've already got automation, um, the telemetry is probably in use uh, and we would just need an API to collect the data. But most of that, we have an on-site software team, so we can write a lot of the software in order to capture that if we don't have something standard. You know, and to add to that, uh, the, the, that irrigation efficiency metric, uh, which we're told over and over by our growers is probably one of the things they go to regularly. Uh, our clients, that is, as far as using that percentage as a baseline. So if you installed that equipment, whether it was for um, scheduling, for reduction of water application, those are obviously the two primary reasons we hear from clients that they install that type of equipment. At least if you can get swim rolling before 
too long into your season, you could get a baseline irrigation efficiency. Maybe it is, maybe we won't know what you did before, uh, before you installed that equipment, but we'd know right out the gate. And there's still you know, clients that, that already have equipment installed that then look to enhance their water usage, even with that equipment in place. And they can get that percentage right out the gate within a week or two of using swim. And then each week thereafter, they're looking to benchmark and improve. And then at the end of the season, that final audited report would give you an irrigation efficiency for the whole season. That would start with your, as your benchmark for the next season, et cetera, et cetera. So hope that answers the question. Next question, um, if you calibrate slash correct the weather data by looking at the satellite data, how do you calibrate or with what do you calibrate the satellite remote sensing data? It's a great question. We could go in a loop on that, couldn't we? Um, so let's, let's start with the satellite data. So the first thing is, of course, we're, we're setting baseline uh, hot and cold pixel uh, assessment before we start calculating the water balance. So when we, that's, that's kind of our, our book and our baseline, right? So uh, red uh, pixels are, or hot pixels are obviously dirt, bone, dry dirt. And then the cold pixels are gonna be water, river, stream, puddle of water, whatever the case may be. So that satellite, remember, is giving us an actual ET measurement at whatever time it flies over. Let's say that satellite's flying over your field at 1.02 PM on whatever date it is. It's taking a picture, snapshot of that field and telling us actually what's transpiring at that point in time. That gives us a bookend measurement. And then we can see what we've estimated the prior eight to 16 days before with the weather data and that curve gets adjusted and can take things into account like crop stress and, uh, and whatnot. I haven't asked the technical team what came first, the chicken before the egg, or the chicken or the egg, right? Do we use the weather data to calibrate against satellite and vice versa? Our QAQC team tells me sometimes they use another data set to validate the other data set, especially if they're correcting data. But by and large, the process is, is such where we're using both of those data sets to adjust the curve. And hopefully that answers your question. Bryce, Kirk, do you have anything to add to that that I might've missed? No. Perfect. Okay. Uh, more technical questions. We can always follow up after the webinar and, and ask them. Okay. Uh, next question. Some of these came in anonymously into the group and some of them came directly to the host. So you have to bear with me here. What can I see in swim that I can't see in NetBeat? And of course, NetBeat is, for those that don't know, is the NetFM product. I guess you could, I'm going to drag that question out a little bit more broadly maybe because it's, it's a good question, we get asked it a lot. What can you see in SWIM that you can't see in other systems, regardless if it's NetBeat or whatever, whatever the, uh, the dashboard implementation platform is to see your flow and human flow data? Um, what, what can you do with SWIM? Kirk, Bryce, that's a, I don't know who sent that, but that, that one should be an easy one. Why don't you go ahead and take a shot at that one? Bryce? Really, when you're looking at the flow data, the flow data is one, one data point you can look at, and then you can look at the weather data, and, and you, could, you, you might be able to tie some of that into the ET, but I think where our real value is, we cover everything past the pump. So once you get past the flow, you need to, to have a good understanding and an accurate reading of ET to understand what your plant's using, uh, what's being evaporated, what's being transpired from the plant, and then any tail, uh, whether it's being accounted for or not, we can account for that, whether it be subsurface or surface tail. So we really fill in the gaps beyond that flow. Um, irrigation is a great thing to have, and but tying that in with the plant use, you get a really a much bigger picture or a broad picture of exactly what's happening with your water every drop. Great answer. Kirk, you have anything to add to that? No, that's perfect. You know, one thing that resonated with me when Bryce was answering that question is this soil profile component of the water balance. So, of course, we're able to, and more robustly in version two, we'll be able to assign, quote, physical water bank accounts to each field. So field A will have 500 units of water, field B will have 300 units at the beginning of the season. That could go up or down, depending if you have credits or debits from either the district or from just your own use. Of course, then it'll be debited. So that's the physical water component of the water balance. But the soil profile, 
we're starting with the full soil profile. Part of that water balance report is that that soil profile is, uh, is in deficit, right? When water is leaving the system. So that gives us the ability to look at each of the sources of water, whether it's precipitation, surface ground. And if we're over applying against precipitation that's coming in, growers can make adjustments to that. So that's an example data. I mean, there's multiple data sets that, that folks can use and they do use on a regular basis, but that's one of them in addition to irrigation efficiency. And you need more, you need that interconnection of the surface, I'm sorry, the application and consumption of water meshed together, again, called double entry accounting to be able to see something like that, uh, which you can't just see with flow data. Hope that answers the question. Uh, let's see here, next question. Here's a good one. How do you justify the ROI slash value proposition of SWIM? Kirk Bryce, you guys want to take a shot at that? I think it really depends on what your situation is. Every, every grower and every irrigator is in a different situation. Um, if you have plenty of surface water and you don't even know how much you're paying for your water, I would say there's no ROI. Um, however, if you're, uh, for example, relying heavily on pumping and you're worried about your allocation being taken back and maybe being charged for water and or you pay quite a bit of money to, to move that water, whether it be electricity or, or uh, you know, diesel to move that water, um, we'd have to sit down and see if there is an ROI. I can tell you we don't deploy where there's not a fit and, uh, you know, probably 30 to 40% of the people we sit down and talk to, there's not a fit and it comes down to that. It's really the return on investment. If it's not worth the investment, um, we'll let you know that. Um, and, and we move forward from there. But again, I guess the bottom line is if you know how much you pay for your water and you're paying quite a bit, I think we can determine really quickly if we're good ROI or we're not good ROI. Great answer, Bryce. If I can add, you know, sometimes in our area, uh, I, I mentioned that we were open channel flow down here and there's a lot of question marks that our, our farmers ask of us on, on uh, gosh, a couple gates get opened up towards the end of the canal or, or before his gate. And he's somewhat concerned on, on, is he really getting what he orders? And so we're able to give him what water is entering his field. Uh, along with water balance report, we're able to talk a little bit about district delivery or delivery into his exact field and be able to kind of narrow some things down there. And that could be a significant amount of money and that return on the investment of being able to order what you want or what you need or what you think you're getting. Uh, there's a return on that investment as well. That could pay for equipment long term for the year. That's great, Kirk. I'll just, I'll add just one comment to that. Generally, you know, and Bryce alluded to this pretty solidly, but generally we deal with two different types of clients. That first client has some level of water use data. Again, pad and paper, uh, Excel spreadsheet, some form of data, taking pump meters, uh, readings, um, estimating it based on design flows. There's a whole myriad of ways, but they've got some level of data. Uh, but they're always looking at ways to do things better. And just having QM flow data doesn't tell them much. They can put that paper in their drawer uh, for the most part. Uh, but, you know, looking at one delivery one week and then the second delivery the second week or irrigation event, whichever method you're using, doesn't tell you a whole lot. So that second group of client has some real problems uh, compared to the first. Uh, they don't have really any understanding of their water use other than what their district tells them. Um, they might have limited sources of water they're struggling with understanding how they're going to get through whatever it might be sigma or surface water declines or maybe it's both um, and those are the folks that that probably need a little more help and a little bit more love com uh, compared to both of them but if you look beyond the agronomic argument of of saving uh, water use or increasing yield anytime you make a change to your operation whether it's infrastructure or change to the method of using water it's really tough to get a cross the board baseline measurement that you can use to benchmark, right? And that irrigation efficiency, we're told by almost all of our clients is it, because it's a percentage, it goes across all operations, they start with that percentage and it can only go up from there, hopefully. <laughs> you don't want it to go down. So going up from there, 
they can see. And some weeks they're successful, some weeks they're not. And it gives them that ability to baseline and chart their data or their water use uh, against a common denominator. So management companies can use it, right? They can use it for managing multiple operations, some inside their area of, of influence and travel and sometimes out of it. Uh, understanding that water usage above and beyond the, the, the standard, which is valid, and we do help increase yield and reduce water usage, but uh, we, we go a little bit beyond that. Let's see here, one more question. Can you get a recording of this session? Yes, we will make this available uh, on our website and social media platforms here um, afterwards. So anyone that wasn't able to join, uh, we had at, we've had on our entire webinar series, we've been asked to make these uh, videos available and they will be forthcoming. Okay, we are getting to the top of the hour. If there are any questions you didn't have an opportunity to ask within the uh, session, uh, you can always go to swim.com. We'd like to the very least educates folks on water counting and the water balance. We'll give you we'll give you a hand where we can. Uh, with that, appreciate you all joining this this edition of the webinar series. We have another one forthcoming here at the end of the year. Another announcement. So uh, keep your eyes on your email for that. Other than that, everyone have a great weekend. Thanks for joining, um, and take care. <laughs>